Good afternoon, my name is Camden and welcome or welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be reading through some negative reviews on some of my favorite books. I've seen a couple of these videos floating around on YouTube and I thought it would be really fun to try it myself, especially because I don't think I've shared a lot of my favorite books with you guys on my channel. Mostly what I focus on is books that I'm reading currently or books that I plan on reading and I don't talk a lot about the books that are already my favorites. So I thought this would introduce you guys to some of my reading tastes a little bit better and also just kind of a fun time just reading through what people thought, letting you know if I agree with some of their points or if I totally disagree and just having a little laugh. So anyway, that's what we're gonna be doing. I have Goodreads pulled up on my phone and I'm gonna go through and pick out some of the one and two star reviews that I see. Okay, the first book that I came across is Book of a Thousand Days by Shannon Hale. This book is one of my all-time favorite books. I really love the world building in this book. I really love the diary style. If I had to guess what people are going to criticize about this, I'm going to say probably a valid critique might be that it is kind of based off of Mongolian culture but the author is obviously not Mongolian so that might be a criticism that I see. Other than that I'm not really sure what people would beef with this book on but let me go to the reviews. Let's scroll until we see a, a one star. Okay found my first one star review. This is by Just Cat. I'm gonna give you a little bit of a background on this book before I read the review. So this book follows two girls who are locked in a tower because the princess refuses to marry the man that her father has chosen for her. So as punishment, he locks her and her lady's maid into a tower um, to kind of teach her a lesson. Story takes off from there. So here's the first one star review that I found. I still can't get over why Dashti can place her foot out the mini window, hold hands with the con, and be pulled out forcefully by the con, but they can never even peek out to see each other's faces. Yup, still boggles me. I really tried to shut off my brain while reading this and kept reminding myself that it's a children's book, but I just couldn't shut it off completely. There wasn't a thing about Dashti that gave me warm thoughts. <laughs> Though, those are actually kind of valid criticisms, yeah. There are a couple of things that require a little bit of suspension of disbelief, but I feel like the positive qualities of this book far outweigh the negative and like I can suspend disbelief a little bit especially because I feel like I would be stupid enough to like fall for like the same things that Dashti did so <laughs> fair fair enough I'll take it <laughs> let's see what else okay here's the next one star review so this fantastic little perfect maid is stuck in a tower with a high-end jerk and yet through the course of her years locked away in the tower never did she portray my dream scene which would have gone a bit like this dashti sarin peel potatoes sarin no i'm too afraid and small and helpless to pick up a dang potato peeler and rub it on a potato it'll mar my perfect hands dashti live with it like seriously dude i volunteered to keep you company for seven long years suck it up sarin give me the cat dashti you know what fine throws the cat at face i'm done <laughs> sarin wailing uncontrollably i think i see a wolf save me <laughs> dashti lol nope walks away <laughs> Sadly, this never happened, but I had had it when the final straw was struck like a match. The cat. That poor cat was my favorite character except for the kitchen boy. So much sadness. <laughs> I can't really fault this one either. Definitely Dashti is a very selfless and humble character, and I don't relate to her a ton. I think she's so precious and lovely, but I definitely would have punched Saren in the face sometime over the course of this book because her patience far exceeds my own. But yeah, I can understand how that was frustrating for you. Okay, the next book that I have is The Little Prince by Antoine de Saint-Exupéry. Life-changing, beautiful. This book follows a little prince. He lives on a little planet. It's a child's book and it follows him as he journeys to earth and discovers the true meaning of love and it's just very moving, lovely little story. Let's see who dared criticize this book. Well, that one's in Spanish, so that's no bueno. Okay, this one is a two-star review, but I'm having a little bit of trouble finding a one-star, so I'm gonna read this one. 
by Paul Bryant. In a grimy underground locked public toilet, the little prince wakes slowly. He's been out cold for hours. He's bleeding from a gash on his upper arm. He finds he is chained by leg irons to the wall. There's another person sharing his predicament. It's a bear also chained to the opposite wall. In the center of the floor is a corpse of what appears to be a donkey in a pool of blood. <laughs> near the corpse are near the corpse are a gun, a tape recorder, and a saw. Grown-ups are very strange <laughs> that's a little so sadly. Let me try that last line again. Grown-ups are very f strange, said the little prince to himself, sadly. Um, okay. <laughs> so this one is a little bit of a parody, I guess. Um. <laughs> this is... <laughs> um, this one's a little bit of an exaggeration, but not too far off the mark. There is a lot of content in the book that's like pretty disturbing and upsetting <laughs> and the little prince does take it in stride um if you will but it's certainly not this graphic it is written for children as i said before but um i guess that is you know a valid criticism it is a little gruesome for a children's book <laughs> Okay, I don't know if I can find another review that's as good as that, Jim. Um, continuing on. Okay, here's a one star. Adina says, A children's book that is for adults. A moral allegory too full of symbols. For me, it feels like the author struggled to include as many symbols as possible in as few pages as possible. I do not agree with all the author's ideas. The repeated motive that grown-ups are bad, wrong, going nowhere felt rude. Also, The Little Prince is quite annoying. I guess that's a take. I mean, all grown-ups certainly are not bad, wrong, and going nowhere, but I think the point of the book is to show grown-ups' cares and worries in comparison with those of a child and how we lose a lot of ourselves in the transition from childhood to adulthood and sometimes we don't focus on the things that matter. I think it's a very beautiful illustration of that, but I hear your point, Adina, and you're entitled to your opinion. There are a ton of reviews in different languages on this one because it has been translated so many times. Okay, the next book I'm gonna look at is Leaving Time by Jodi Pico. This is another one of my favorites, of course. If I had to guess, what everybody is going to criticize. It's going to be the elephants. <laughs> I feel like for some reason people are going to beef with the elephants even though that was one of my favorite parts of the book. Oh wow. First review on here is a one star. Okay friends, you know I'm not one to write slam type reviews but there is one way to describe this book. I have never used this phrase before and I hope to never use it again. But honesty is my highest priority here on Goodreads, and I have to say it. This book was a hot mess. Avoid this mess of a book, which was about elephants, psychics, and who knows what else, because I got to page 170 and threw the thing across the room. I know there is supposed to be some sort of amazing twist ending to this story, but honestly, these characters were so unlikable and so completely unbelievable that I truly couldn't care less what twisty ending I'm missing here. I've never read this author before and now I have no plans to ever ever read anything by her again. What? I know that she's very popular which is one reason why I'm not holding back my feelings. I'm sure my little one star review will get completely lost in the shuffle of five and four star raves. But I just need to say it. Hot mess. Hot mess. Well, I understand if you didn't like this book, but I feel like you shouldn't write off an entire author, especially someone as like widely acclaimed as Jodi Pico, just for one book that you didn't like. I mean, read whatever you want to read, but you should try a couple more before you write her off totally. In regards to the review, this book really does combine a lot of different elements. It follows a girl who's trying to find her missing mother. The mother 
like years ago who is um, doing her like thesis and research on elephants and a couple of adults that the girl has kind of brought in to her little investigation to try and find out where her mother is um, because her mother's been missing for years. So she brings in a psychic who used to be like a television psychic who would um, work on missing persons cases and a local detective who's like kind of an alcoholic and down on his luck now he's a private investigator so she's bringing in these two adults to try and help her find her mother and then we're getting the mother's perspective so it does combine a lot of elements but honestly for me it really really worked and this book captured my interest and i just overall really vibed with it so Hate to see someone have a bad experience, but to each their own. Next, we have a two-star review by Jessie. Let me start off by saying if you don't really love elephants, don't even pick this up. The first three quarters reads like a work of nonfiction on elephant behaviors, strung lightly with a bit of girl searches for her mom's story. The last quarter gets more into the story and less into the comparisons of elephant to human and does pick up. However, Pico always throws in an unseen twist and this one did not leave me going, no way. Instead, it left me going, oh no, you didn't. Unacceptable. <laughs> Great characters as always, but too much elephant. <laughs> I knew it. I knew people were going to roast the elephants. I really love that aspect of the story, to be honest. I've mentioned this in a few videos, but I just love going into a book and learning something that I didn't know, like about a topic that I don't know. So reading about the elephant behavior patterns and like all that stuff, I thought it was so great. And it brought some great attention to the like ivory hunting and all that stuff. So I really liked it, but... I guess I can understand why a lot of people didn't. Okay, next book is The Kind Worth Killing by Peter Swanson. This book is a thriller and it follows a man who meets a woman by chance on a plane ride and they end up plotting to kill his wife together who is having an affair. So let's see what people had to say about this one. Scroll, 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 scroll. Two star review by Jennifer. This one says, disappointing. It takes skill to write in a plain, unobtrusive style that's also engaging and enjoyable. I'm shocked that Swanson is also a poet because his prose is so mundane, banal, boring. For how many dumb twists there are, there is a lot of repetition. Character motives, internal dialogue, and plot, even within the same POV. Pure sloppiness. I did not have a problem with this author's writing style. In fact, I've read a lot of his books and I really like him as an author. I would probably put him among my top books. Different strokes for different folks, it would appear in this case. Jennifer. One star review by Jen. The Jennifers are really coming down hard on this book. The first part of this book was deplorable. I did enjoy the last two thirds, but it was a feat to get through the beginning. The author is a misogynist too, so there's that. I had to roll my eyes and sigh in annoyance more times than I could count. Misogynist? Is he? Is that like a known thing? Peter Swanson misogyny. I'm not seeing anything online, but if you guys know what she's talking about, let me know. Okay, Sophie has a two-star review. I know the reader is meant to find this book super suspenseful and be amazed by all the twists and turns, but I mostly found it tedious. It was disappointing, really, because I think the author had a great concept here. I just didn't like the execution of it. Maybe the real problem was that there's no one in the story to root for. All the characters are appalling people, and I ultimately didn't care too much what happened to any of them. That is a true fact. Um, all of the characters are bad people but in some ways I think I enjoyed that aspect of this book more because it was like you were just watching like a train wreck happen without like the stress of like anyone being on board the train if that makes sense like you don't have to worry that your favorite characters are gonna die because everybody's an asshole I don't know for me that that worked out but I guess for some people they need to have a good character at the center of the story. Okay, next is The Mountain Story by Lori Lassens. This is one of my absolute favorite all-time books, very underrated. Um, so all of you go read The Mountain Story, it's really good. This one also only has 1400 reviews so we might not find a lot. 
This is a review from Ron S. Lassens does well with dialogue and the interior thought processes of her main protagonist in this story about three generations of women lost on a mountain with 18 year old that's gone there to commit suicide. Unfortunately, the descriptions of the physical environment are poor and the overall story feels like something cooked up to meet a creative writing class project deadline at the 11th hour. While I very much wanted to enjoy this books, this book, Lassen's just didn't pull it off for me. All right, I mean, a little harsh. I actually really enjoyed the concept of this book. This one is a survival story and it follows, like he said, um, a boy who's gone up to the mountain to commit suicide and three women who are visiting. It's a mother, a daughter, and a grandmother and they all become lost on this mountain and they're trying to help each other out and survive the elements and um, get to a place where they can be rescued. And overall, I really, really enjoyed this book. We delve into a lot of everybody's backstory and the things that they've been going through and what le led them up to this mountain again. Overall, I thought it was a very moving story with a lot of very complex characters and I really loved it. But again, everybody's entitled to their own opinion, so Ron S.'s opinion is just as good as mine. Who else wants to bash the mountain story? Chris Waterford says, I enjoyed this novel for the first 50 pages or so, then it went off on a tangent for the next 50 to 60 pages and then was all over the place from then on. The main narrative was ordinary and the sidetracks even more banal, though looking at the other ratings it could just be me. A book like this that I read like several years ago, I'm wondering if it would be worth rereading. Like maybe I do agree with some of these people now, but when I first read it a few years ago, like this book was it for me. I was obsessed. I thought about it for like a solid three weeks after reading it. It's one of those books that really stuck with me and resonated with me and I really wanted like everybody in my life to read it. Definitely on the favorites list but maybe I should read it again and see if it still deserves that that spot, you know? Okay, moving on to a more recent book that I read. This is Alatsui by Darcy Little Badger. If you guys saw my reading from Native Authors for Native American Heritage Month video, you will have seen my thoughts on this one. I thought this book was like utter perfection. This book follows a Lipan Apache girl who can communicate with the dead. And this book itself is set in a very, very interesting collision of the real world and like a mythology setting where there are vampires in our world and all these kind of mythical creatures and monsters. And um, she is trying to solve who killed her cousin in the midst of all this. So this book is a must read, definitely pick it up if you have not. So, about Olatsue. Okay, Erica Sage says, I wanted to love this book so much. I couldn't wait to get my hands on it and I was pondering possibly teaching it. I mean, it's got ghosts and monsters, leap in Apache, history and culture, and crimes to solve. And it started out great. Lovely writing, pithy dialogue, and all the rest I was looking forward to. Unfortunately, it read very middle grade instead of young adult, and the pithy dialogue popped up in the midst of pivotal tense scenes, taking away from the plot and the tone. I still loved the Leap in Apache aspect. In fact, I enjoyed every time an elder shared a tradition or story, but as the characters went into detective mode, I felt like I was reading a Scooby-Doo script. I finished the book, but this needed a 12-year-old protagonist and a middle grade marketing campaign. I think sometimes adults can project onto young adult genre thinking that it should still be for them and geared towards them and their likes and some young adults still have the maturity of a middle grader. Not everybody matures at the same rate and it's okay to have young adult books that feel a little younger and middle grade books that feel a little older. So I don't know how valid that criticism is about that it should have been marketed towards middle graders instead because again we're talking young adult like these could be 14 year olds or it could be 17 year olds but it's okay to have a space for 14 year olds and the younger end of that young adult spectrum 
within the young adult genre. My overall opinion is adults should not be the end all be all of what counts as young adult and what counts as middle grade. Also, you don't like Scooby-Doo. That's a hot take. Okay, I saved my absolute favorite book in the world for last. This is Midwinter Blood by Marcus Sedgwick. I have read this book probably five or six times at this point and it just gets better with every reread. This is another one that I will not shut up about to all of my friends and I try to get everybody I know to read it because it's so so good and I just want to discuss it with somebody. Here's the first one star review. This is by Ali. Eric Seven is traveling to a remote island called Blessed where it is said they have a very rare flower that can extend your life and improve your health. When he gets to the island, strange things start happening. He has absolutely no service on any of his devices, the chargers for his electronics have disappeared, and everyone is giving him the strange tea. Feeling like he's been here before, he's drawn to a young girl on the island named Merle, who seems to appear wherever he ends up. Told through short stories that take place over the years, Sedgwick tells the history of the island as well as the connections between Eric and Merle. The story includes many different fantasy elements such as vampires, miracle flowers, and ghosts. This was by far the hardest book to get through that we've read this semester. I found it extremely boring and incredibly confusing. The amount of foreshadowing that used is ridiculous and I feel like I had no idea what was going on. I felt so entirely lost the entire time I was reading it and had it not been required reading, I would have stopped reading 75 pages in. I do not recommend this book to anyone. My goodness, that's a strong opinion. There's not much to say or like really combat with this review. Like, I didn't find it confusing. I understood what was happening right from the start. And I feel like the themes that really connect the story throughout clarify the situation. I just wish I could sit down with you and explain to you the entire plot so you would understand how brilliant and beautiful and perfect this story is for me but I can't do that okay next review is another one star review and this one is from Aubrey my opinion on this book is very short I could not get into it it was deliriously boring things happened too fast and aren't explained with enough detail honestly I'm surprised this was ever accepted by a publisher the author is trying to get a certain message across to his readers but unfortunately I can't even make it through 50 pages I was literally forcing myself to continue I would not recommend this to anyone as a good read well, I'm so glad it was accepted by a publisher because now it's my favorite book of all time and I read it every year, Aubrey. I don't know, I guess this is a common criticism of it that it's not very clear. I didn't experience that at all. Like, I understood right away what was happening. Um, I think there's so much foreshadowing in the beginning that it becomes quickly very clear what's happening and you understand the ties between all the stories and as they progress there's little elements that keep popping up everywhere and I don't know I loved everything about this book like it is a perfect book in my eyes um so hard for me to know where you're coming from anyway that is it for this video I hope you guys enjoyed it I think um somewhere in the future I'm gonna do a video that is reading five star reviews of books that I rated one star so we can see kind of the exact opposite of this situation um, but anyway if you guys enjoyed this video please hit the like button subscribe if you are not already comment down below let's have a little chat and I will see you guys next Friday goodbye